Hi guys, Harry here, and I'm back for Cow with Shoju. Still not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but hey, I mean, it's been quite a while, but I decided since it's been such a long time, I would actually go back to where I left off from part two, because my third episode didn't have any audio. So I thought, hey, I might as well just, you know, redo it since I'm kind of coming back, and also gives me a little bit of a chance to relearn, I suppose. But either way, I just kind of want to get in, back into it, and the last thing that happened was we saw the doctor. So we had a little rundown, we got in the school, we had a heart attack, just, you know, a girl asking us out, that was great. But I think I saw her sale. Because I have a feeling I... It's not one of those games where you're meant to be the main guy, it's just kind of one of those games where you're kind of helping him along. You know, eh, never mind, just, just, just get into it. So I right, we seen the doctor and he gave us well he told us just keep taking heart pills, I think. Okay, when he asked. Oh, I must out before I even realised it. A quick visit indeed. Well I've been here for like two seconds, so you have to pretty good. I find it strange I still remember his name because that's been what, a month or two. It's been quite a while. Anyway, I end up standing in front of the main building and the auxiliary building. Although to my eyes they still look one and the same. Oh this is big emotional speed. Right. It's the first real look I get at the other students. So I watch people coming out of the school, going towards the gate or the dorms. Everyone seems to know where they're going. Oh, also guys, I have cookies again, so... Forgive any crunching, but I mean, it's a text-based adventure game, I mean... If you're watching it, you really... Like, I, I personally think it's good that's only we. That's done as I start, every time I try text-based one, I get cookies. And I was quite successful with it in May Night's Pizza, that's right. And I still keep thinking that most of them don't look too special for being students at a special school. Then again, neither do I. Does that make me one of them? One of us? I do I say, because I was like quite like a sour when I first played this game. I was thinking, you know, school for disabled. I didn't think it would be nice, but... Yeah, game put a lot of things in perspective for me, and that's one of the reasons I actually like it so much. And I should go somewhere too to prevent me from getting lost. It's around dinner time, but I feel tired instead of hungry. Wearing the same my only clothes I trudge, trudge towards the dorm, set a little way apart from the main building complex. There is a garden of sorts between the school and the dorms, shrubbery, flowers and that overbearing smell of fresh grass that fills the atmosphere. Again, this really sounds really nice, but what is with the trees? I'm not sure if I've mentioned it yet, but what with the trees? I mean, they, they look like they've been water brushed. You know? It's, it's weird. Can we dorms on me? On my tired mind that the smell feels novel because I haven't been outside at all for so long. Man, that guy's got a big nose. Look at that. And <laughs> look at that guy. Oh, right. That brought back the memory of me laughing for like a minute at that guy. Now one bitch of, you know, with all schoolmates. Wish we never heard from him again. Anyway, <laughs> the dorm building is big and made of red brick like the others. It feels way too pompous what it is, so I feel... F so I push forward going inside. It takes more than more time than necessary to fish out the keys I was given from my pocket. Room 119. Despite the ornate exterior, the inside of the dorm is fairly new, functional and boring. Just like the one in the main building, the halls and doors are wide to accommodate they wheelchairs. The same goes for the elevators at the end of the hallways. And elevator. Moving on. I put my head around the corner of the common door. Is this for Kenji? I swear it's for Kenji. If this were Kenji, then I, I, I've got a reintroduction there. That's just awesome. Inside, a few students are watching the television. One nods and gives a quick hello before turning back the TV. That's nice. <laughs> Seems only the girls here are sociable. I suppose that's perfectly fine with me. Yeah, they're assholes anyway. Wait, has this game got swearing? Yes, there again. It's, it's got partial nudity, so I think I'm fine with swearing. I climb the stairs to the upper floor. Here small corridors branch off from the main hallway. Each of these minor halls seem to have a toilet and a shower, as well as four rooms. About halfway down I down the hall I spy room 119. The nameplates on the room adjacent to mine are blank. I guess there are just two of us here. So I think it is. Light shines from below the door of room 117, so I knock lightly. Oh dude it is. Hello, is anyone home? From inside I hear a few movements, then the clicking of way more locks than I thought. 
these doors had. After a moment, the door squeaks open. <laughs> a respectable boy is standing in the doorway. He's looking at me very intently through his extremely thick glasses. Who is it? Blind. No, at least not completely. Why would he have eyeglasses if he was? <laughs> Leans in closer to me until our nose is almost touching. His breath stinks of garlic. You were uh, fighting off the vampires there, bud? It's out, Nikai. I'm moving in the next room. I thought I should introduce my... His face suddenly brightens in realisation. He stands back upright, thrusting his hand out in a smiling greeting, almost straight in my diaphragm. That'd be an awkward first encounter. And I don't mean this, but I mean if he, uh, reaches the same different. Oh, what's up, dude? Name's Kenji. <laughs> you know, the voice is probably going to change every time I do it. Hey. Ah, uh, hi. I take Kenji's sweaty hand and shake it. Still a little rattled by the sudden change of attitude and vehement welcome. There were some suspicious looking people going in and out of your room earlier. It was probably just my parents. Your parents? You sure? Because there could have been some other people too. You can't judge a book by its cover. Because that place proverb is left hanging between us awkwardly as I try to think of somewhere to respond. I'll say the chances are high enough. He shudders and makes some exaggerated hand gestures. You're a brave man, Sal. Me? I don't think I can trust the chances. <laughs> the only one I trust is myself. Does that mean I shouldn't get to know you either? You thanks about this for a while. A wise decision. <laughs> Damn, you are smiling, you look. Probably. I actually do think the voice changed over time. What you look like? I hope not smart. What, is it okay for me to be smart but not look smart? Thanks, man. So, uh, nice you. <laughs> he squints his eyes and leans closer again. But I lean backwards to dodge it. Never mind. It doesn't matter. With that, he turns, fumbles around for a moment in search of the door handle, and shuts the door behind him. I slide the key into the lock of my door marked 119. Bleak beach walls... White linen, a desk made of some type of light wood, ugly curtains. Snow one's room, and personal, like my hospital room was. My bags are sitting on the foot of my bed, looking a lot emptier than they did this morning. The closet is sitting open, stocked with my clothes. Also, it seems there are a number of school uniforms hanging there as well. I know it's pinned the sleeve of one of my shirts. Hey, Jan, we've unpacked your things and made your bed. They said that if you don't fit, if they don't fit, then you should go to the office tomorrow. If you have any problems, you can always call us. Love, Mum and Dad. Yeah, isn't this where the Mum didn't say anything during the whole hospital scene? Like it was all your dad. J just saying. Well, at least I don't have to worry about unpacking. Oh, I rewound it. I kind of hoped I would have. Then there'll be something to do. It's still too early. I put the note down on the desktop and lie down on the bed feeling drained. Lying there makes me want to read something, but I have nothing with me. I wonder if the hospital conditioned me for wanting to read whenever I have nothing to do. The rest of the urge just keeps growing until I have to stand up. Maybe it's stress or something. I was pretty nervous for it about where before coming and for the entire day today a uh, day wait. For the entire day today too. That that's me being stupid. I still am, I think. Damn, I have to strap myself somehow, so I won't be this unnatural all the time. Tomorrow I'll go borrow some books from the library. Yeah, I'll do that. But for now, the bowls of medication neatly arranged on my night table catch my eye. I pick up one and shake it just to hear the contents rattle inside, and then read on the glued on pharmacy level. Label. It's Alnakai, two tablets daily to stay alive. Blunt, I like it. It don't really say that, but it could just as well. To be fair, if it says that instead of all the stuff I couldn't understand, I would be quite happy. You know? N you know, nothing I can't understand, it's just simple. Would be nice. Maybe just like a little summary. Then again, saying not to die might work against some people, but hey. It's kind of twisting how your life depend on chemicals like this. I resent it a little, but what choice do I have? With a sigh, I begin my new daily ritual of taking the right number of pills from each bottle for caref being careful to check the correct dosages. 
I lie down again, feeling hollow and uncertain. And after that, I keep staring at the blank, unfamiliar, unfamiliar ceiling for a long time. A very long time, it seems. <laughs> it doesn't start looking any more familiar, not even after darkness falls and long shadows draw across my room like fingers. The sheets feel slightly more comfortable, warm and nest-like against the chill that passes for room temperature here. Yeah, I, was, I don't know, it's Japan, isn't it? Is Japan warm? I, I have no, I have no clue. Soon the lightest shade of darkness there as the ceiling looks like every ceiling does at night, and it becomes the only thing I recognise anymore. The night beckons me to sleep, and I feel the coldness of unfamiliar familiarity and fear creeping up my spine once again. I keep drifting further away from the world I know. See, that's what I like about this game. That's one hell of a way to say going to sleep. Just saying. Text based adventure games are well, text based is Oh! Another thing. I think I was quite wrong in saying it's a dating simulator because it's kinda not. That's something like more like honey pop or something along those lines. Not that I've played it or anything. Well actually I have a I'm not saying you know, moving on. But I think the actual term you give it is a visualized novel because it's a lot of reading but they give you pictures to help you out kind of like a more adult version of a storybook i suppose or picture book anyway i wake up in a strange room so i had morning light shimmers across the light gray ceiling i'd forgotten to draw the curtains closed last night <laughs> this is my room isn't it my room this is the third room this year I'm supposed to call mine. Various things around here remind me that indeed it's me who is supposed to be the one living here. My bags on the floor, my new, my new school books on the desk, my numerous medications on the night table. I stare at the bottles for a moment. Liberate. Liberate until I open a bottle, shake out a pill and pop out a tablet from a foil sheet. I down them with a chase of water before, without thinking about the chemistry. My uniform's in the closet. I sink out from under the sheets and stretch my back before dressing up. Ping on a new school uniform feels like dressing in someone else's clothes. The artificial smell of generic deodorant invades my nose, but the feeling of fresh cloth against my back is a good one, a natural one. It feels like a school uniform as it should. It's not much different from what I used to wear before. That goes for other things too. So far this place seems more or less like a normal school, except for the people. I think back to my talk with Kenji yesterday, Misha's constant laughter and Chizune's sweeping sign language gestures. Well, I've only met three students so far, maybe aren't that normal. I'm sure I've done. Yeah, didn't I mention this before? What was Misha here for exactly? I, I doubt she's in a school to help Chizune and... What, is her problem is she's too loud? I mean... Is that sign worthy of getting excluded from a regular school? I don't know, maybe it was just in the area. It all seems weird. Well, I've only met three students so far, maybe they aren't that normal. I'm sure others are. Or perhaps people like them and what passes for normal around here. Yeah, what does pass for normal around here? What do people do? I didn't see a lot of kids hanging out after classes yesterday, so maybe there were clubs. If so, I wonder if I should join one. Although cla all through class, the question remains on my mind, so I decided to ask Shizune about it when we split into groups. After all, she did say if I had anything I wanted to know, I should ask her. Great conversation. She crosses her arm and shifts her gaze slowly to Misha, who looks more preoccupied with trying to grind the eraser of a pencil down so the top is perfect than evenly fat. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, Shizan. Is there something you want from me? Oh, I see. Hmm, that's a good question, Ishan. Right, Ishan. I think it's Japanese for kid. Either boy, or child, or woman. I, I think. I, I don't know, my memory's slipping. My first thought is that she... That means she doesn't know, which is worrying. Maybe I'm being too negative. But anyway, Misha don't... Please don't prove me wrong. Oh, that's right. Everyone is encouraged to join a club. A lot of people do so because there isn't really anything else to do. 
There are also school events, like the festival coming up in a few days. Almost every student in school tends to help out with it, doing whatever. So you actually transferred in a busy time. Maybe you can help out too. Yeah, sure. What's the festival about? Misha Freezers. <laughs> I don't know it, Dan. The truth is it's a local event, and not from I'm not from this area, so... She starts sighing desperately to Suzune, asking her to bail her out. Suzune adjusts her glass at the end of an oddly grandiose flourish and starts sounding hard and heavy. Huh? Oh. Who cares? Misha puffs out her chest as she sh shouts Suzune words out at me with a disproportionate amount of pride. Too loud, I can see. Or too loud, I can see heads turning to look in our direction. Not so loud. That might have been more creepy than I attended. Anyway, human beings evolve with each new generation. The ideals and beliefs behind a festival will never really change with time. Yeah, I cannot speak today. Probably should have done a tight space game. <laughs> now it's about delicious fried food and amusing little games that you play to win prizes. <laughs> the teacher ch clears his throat very loudly, battling his long wooden pointer against the others. Of a palm like baton. He shoots a pointed glaze at us. Finally noticing where we are, Misha stifles a yelp and quickly quiets down. Soon they don't seem embarrassed at all though, brushing off without care. You are in the middle of class and should start working. That's right, Shishan. What that's right, Shishan? Are you asking because you're interested in joining the club? Wait, we rewind. We rewind. Rewind button. Yep. That, that's the base before. Could have been my eyes playing tricks with me, but I think I saw a suspicious glance exchange between two of them. Not between them, but look, there was something suspicious about that, eh? Misha's tone has also changed, although it does that with every other word anyway. Yeah, I was thinking about it. Misha and Shizune look at each other again. I'm about to ask what they have in mind when something dark flies in my peripheral vision, catching my attention. Out of the corner of the eye, I see the girl with long, dark hair get up from her desk and silently slip towards the door. It doesn't seem like she was working in any group, and no one seemed to notice her but me. D do I see dead people? Or does Sisao see dead people? I glance at teacher who's also looking at the dark-haired girl go, Why doesn't he say anything? Chan, something wrong? I, I broke up. Okay, well, why is middle click? Get rid of text. Uh, you know, whatever. Do I look as uneasy as I feel? Or was Misha just looking at me after, after the girl who left? N no, nothing. Okay, well, like you, we were asking, you don't have any plans for lunch tomorrow or today, do you? I thought I'd go to the library and pick some books up. Not really. Do you want to have lunch together then? Yeah, uh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> okay, Shan, perfect. The rest of the class passes uneventfully. The girl with the long hair never came back. Before I have the time to put any more thought into where she could have gone, the teacher informs us that's time to stop working. Suzune looks more than a little annoyed than that we only just barely managed to finish all the work on time. I'm just glad we finished it all. It's not a contest or anything. No, no, not middle click. Yes, it is a sham. Does she read minds? I, you know. What were you saying? Yeah, impossible. <laughs> really? Really? Wait, so you were saying out? So, you need to... Like, make this clear, man. Make clear to the voice in your head that... Wait. Make clear... The voice in your head is what you're thinking to the person who's reading the thoughts in your head. Yeah. Yeah, that that makes perfect sense. I've noticed this before, but it's kind of funny how Mitra is always moving her hands and signing not only anything she says, but what everyone else is saying at any given time. It's lip reading, you know. I mean, I suck at it, but <laughs> I don't think everyone else is. Obviously, it must be Shizune can understand it. Her eyes dart back and forth between Misha's hands and me. I don't know who I'm supposed to be looking at. I'm talking to Misha, but that might be wrong. Maybe I should face Shizune. I'm used to looking in the direction of the person whose voice I'm hearing, but really? Shizune can't hear me, but would be disrespectful to talk to her only through Misha. Then again, isn't that what she's doing? No, at least she's looking at me, 
It's all very confusing. We'll take some time to get used to. Um, <laughs> my advice would to be. I, I don't know. It's that you're on your own. It's not a contest because contest the competition's over prize. If there's no prize online, it's not really a contest. Shizune's eyes flash dangerously with a competitive glare. She stares at me as if she's surprised I'm challenging her. I think maybe this is a contest to her. I've never noticed before how dark and blue her eyes are. It's truly an alluring glaze. Gaze. <laughs> glaze. It has a very nice glaze. Are you sure, Shan? Very sure. <laughs> You're wrong, Shan, because I don't want to be the slowest one in the class. Therefore, what's on the line is my confidence in, in my abilities. And the prize is the satisfaction of proving them. You still call it competition if it's really just like... Because you're the only one competing over that particular prize. Anyway. <laughs> uh, Shizine pushes her glasses up on the bridge of her nose in a very matter-of-fact way. I'd argue more about the bells ring. And she quickly gets up and picks up a bag looking at me expectantly. I'd almost forgotten I was supposed to have lunch with him. Where do you want to eat? The cafeteria? <laughs> that's so plain. Okay, let's go. Plain? Well, I guess. I'm in old school, I like to eat outside, near the back of the building. It was a good spot, but I didn't find it until the end of my freshman year. I wonder if there is a similar place to eat here. Misha seems to imply as much. Probably should work on the last bit more. Anyway. Do you know Misha pulled me towards the cafeteria, which is surprisingly not packed? Maybe some students for her eating classroom or outdoors. I saw some of the classmates had bulk lunches. After we finished eating, Misha picks up where we left off earlier. If there's a park outside, I'm willing to bet, you know, a good amount of outside. Just saying. So, Shan, you wanted to learn about clubs and stuff, right? Right? Right, Shoshan. Okay, I guess it makes sense to ask her. Exchanging little nods of confirmation, they turn and face me again. And Misha just straightens her posture as she's about to deliver a speech. Shan, do you have anything you're really interested in? Well, I used to play soccer, but I'm not really into it. I didn't, don't follow the teams and players or anything like that. As of late, I just usually just read a lot. And there is a book club, right, Shan? Right, but it seems like they have all the members they can possibly have right now. Sorry, Shan, it's a really popular club. Okay, but more the point... Shan, does this mean that you don't have anything in already in mind? Not really. Good, great, that's great, Shan. Really great. <laughs> Wait, what? Isn't that the Wario ma la laugh? Isn't isn't that the Wario laugh? Wahaha! <laughs> just saying. Just, just saying. I seem to say a lot of this, a lot of things in this game. Why is it so great? No reason. Well, Shan, other than clubs and the upcoming festival, there is one other thing. Student council. I see. I didn't know the school had a student council. That was a very melodramatic set, though, just to tell me that. I'm pretty sure the two of them know this, because Shizune looks a little embarrassed about it, and Misha is laughing. Shizune quickly retakes control of the discussion, in a manner of speaking. After all, it's still Misha who has the voice. Has to voice whatever she says. Haha. <laughs> Hmm, right, right. So maybe you should join the student council. They could use more people. Yes, definitely. You should definitely join. Why? Well, for one, we could hang out every day. Shishan? Shishan? Shishan and I are both in the student council. Actually, Shishan is the president. Hmm. I'm starting to get the suspicion that Shizune and Misha might not exactly be the most unbiased people to talk about this group. As if reading my mind, Shizune quickly adjusts the glasses and signs something to Misha. Uh, of course, we're not trying to get you to join just because we would obviously benefit from you joining the student council and therefore have an incentive to try and get you to say you're admitting that. <laughs> no, we're not admitting nothing. I mean, Hishan, of course, it would be nice if you joined and we would appreciate it. But even without all that, joining the student council shows a healthy interest in the workings of one of school. Yep, it's true, Hishan. Besides, you don't want to spend time with us after... Besides, don't you want to spend more time with us after school, Hishan? I can't tell if she's going being genuine, or is this really good acting? Both of them seem to be trying hard to look the cutest, although they look pretty cute to begin with. Well, 
So settle then. Welcome to the student council, Shan. What? No, no! Oh, see, Shan? Of course it won't go so easily. Did, like, what, did you expect that? Yep, that's right, though. It would be boring if it went that smoothly. Oh well, Shan owes me candy now. Well, that was enough to bow on. I mean, just asking once, though. I mean, come on. I'm no whore! You're betting on it. Hey, my life's not a game, eh? Shizune seems very intrigued by this when Misha signs it to her. The aggressive glint returns to her eyes. Mm. <laughs> what? Hey, what are we about? That's interesting, Rashan. Let's play a game. That's not what I said. How about rich man, poor man, Rashan? If you lose, you have to join the student council. No, actually, I'm not. Well, I have no clue what that is, so hey. No, oh, why not? Well, because you two both have the same incentive, and therefore the same goal, which is to get me to join the student council, right? Yep. Yeah, that is my goal, so... What this means is that both of you can team up, and I'll be at a clear disadvantage. So that's the claim. Also, I, I wouldn't get anything for winning, but get something for losing. You know? Work on your deals, man. Then again, he's declining. What am I on about? <laughs> Sean, I'm very offended. You saying you don't trust us? I know Paul's saying so. D it's ingenuous. D it's ingenuous. I'm not sure how I meant to say that. <laughs> that makes me sad. Sorry. It's hard to tell where Shizune influence ends and Misha thoughts begin. In order to atone for hurting a young girl's feelings, you should definitely join the student council. <laughs> no. How about a game of paper football instead of rich man, poor man? Paper football? Yes, a game they play in America. They make a paper triangle and then you try and shoot it past goalposts that the other player makes with their fingers. Isn't it cool? It's the ultimate form of competition between two people, Shan. I, I could think of a couple... But yeah, sure, let's go with that. And it's also played by elementary and middle school children, Shan. Haha, <laughs> this means it's a game that actually... game that really separates the boys from the men. More like the boys from the slightly older boys. Anyway, I'm not going to play that either. Just the fact you know about it means you're quite surprisingly good at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. How do you know it, Shan? Shizune frowns at Misha telling me that she probably wasn't supposed to admit that so readily. I wouldn't say that I'm happy with the attempts to get me in the student council, but I'm no curious about what the student ca council does here. I've never been on one before, or even know anybody who was a member. So it interests me. I also kind of like Shizune and Misha. So maybe it won't be too bad. I love the music in this game. It's always so calming. Okay, Shan. How about this? The game of world domination. I, I don't know what that is. It's really funny, Shan. You fight and control the world with armies and everything. Sounds like Shizane would be good at it. If you want to play, we can go after school. Oh, really, Shan? We can play just as fun as Shan. Shishan has played in a long time, so if you want to, there are no strings attached. Well, okay. I'm a bit young to be making deals with this. I don't know. It seems off. Okay, okay, okay. Perfect. We'll see you after school in the student council room then, Shan. Wait, why there? Because that's where we keep the game. <laughs> oh, so is that not the why we laugh? That's going to drive me crazy. No? I grimace to tell them how much I do not like this, but it's far more show than anything. So in the end I agree, but only after getting Shizune to acknowledge that I don't mean anything concrete, just by accepting to take a look round and play a game with her. Lunch ends and we go back to class. <laughs> During afternoon classes, the long-haired girl comes back and sits down in her seat without a word. Again, no one seems to notice, or if they do, no one says anything. I want to ask... Misha about it, but I don't want to be nosy. After school, Shizune and Misha quickly finds me in the first floor lobby and latch onto me, covering each flank in case I might try to escape. I feel a little offended, but I've been considering it nevertheless. I'm a bit disturbed that enough people have made a breakthrough in the past that they're on their guard. What's with the escort? It doesn't feel very comfortable. In fact, it makes me feel like a dangerous prisoner being transported to a cell. <laughs> What's wrong, Ishan? That's right, we're just going to play a game of Risk, remember? I 
I know Misha, this all seems a little sinister to me. Again, are you saying this? Dude, make up your mind. I start thinking that when we sit down to play the game, they'll tie me down and torch me until I agree to join the council. Um, moving on. That's highly unlikely, but still, for some reason it just seems that would be so plausible. Getting the student council room is simple as turning two corridors from my side. But there were no corridors out here. Oh, that's a picture, it's, you know, not drawn to obey. I can make fun of if I want. What, that's it? You guys, this makes you guys being on top of me seem a little silly. Again, dude, you give me so un much ammunition here. You know? That's not true, Shan. Shishan says that when the life is threatened, people have shown the capability to pull off superhuman bursts of speed. Life is threatened? Uh, Hisao, you might be killed. Don't want to bring this up, but you might, you might die. You know, your fault for trusting the three girls. Your own fault. I don't know. I think it might be time for me to kind of stop recording, but yeah, let's get past this a little bit. Her expression unchanging, Misha signs saying amusedly to Kazune, who makes a baffling face and puts a hand behind her back, looking pleased with herself. Mm-hmm, mm hmm mm hmm Misha feigns deafness and hums cheerily. Stop that, I know you heard me. You have no excuse on like Shizune. Shizune opens the door of the student council room. It's a very plain, sparsely decorated room, though it's quite large. Maybe even a little larger than a classroom. There's a big table in the centre surrounded by chairs, and a smaller desk prominently placed in the back, I assume it's Shizune's. There are a few regular desks and chairs stacked to one side as well. Extras, perhaps? Aside from the table and chairs, the room doesn't have much to offer. Just a couple of filing cabinets, a bookshelf stacked with old school records and documents. Not much else, in fact. Nothing else. This is a pretty bleak room. They at least put a pod plant in here or something. The most mo most notable thing that in the room that doesn't have is is other people. Are we here early? No. What do you mean no? Does it mean no one else is coming today? Yeah, that's right. Before I manage to ask why that's the case, Shizune claps hands together very energetically. Hey Shan, let's play this. Come on, you promised, didn't you? You have to. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Do you want to know the rules? We explain them to you while we set everything up. When Misha was talking, Shizune takes out what looks like a board game from behind one of the filing cabinets and throws it on the table. Actually, this looks kind of interesting. After Misha spends a little too long for her liking running through the basics with a somewhat vague and confusing to tutorial, Shizune cuts in and clears the game and starts with decisive motion, slicing her arm through the air. Shizune's aggressiveness is rubbing off onto me. I start feeling more com competitive than I intended to be when I agreed to this. Halfway in the game where I try to pond out and defeat Shizune, defend against Shizune's onslaught, from two fronts, she rates my concentration by drumming her fingers on the table to get my attention. Ishan, Ishan wants you to know that you're taking too long to make a move. Zan also says they'll keep let you keep Australia if you agree to join the student council. I thought this was a game with no strings attached. Just the fact she'll dangle that over my head as an offer means that she knows I care about the outcome of this game. And anyway, no. Ishan admires your fighting spirit. And be a benevolent dictator to, who will spare your people if you agree to join the student council. <laughs> Wait, don't think. No, no, I don't. You're so competitive, Shizune. She seems to take this as a compliment. I would expect the student council president to be a little more. Magnum. Magnanimous. 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 She doesn't seem to know what the word means or how it's signed, so she pulls out a piece of paper and writes it for Shizune, who in return signs it back to Misha. Misha presses her index finger against her temples, as if trying to physically imprint the word into her memory. Suddenly Shizune bursts into a flurry of gestures. Misha looks daunted by the pace of her weird signing. What's going on with the dogs? Hmm. 
I'll be one side. Well, that was the end of that. Anyway. Uh, wait, can you slow down, Hishan? Um, Hishan? Hishan says you're going to lose. Tell her I will crush her with world empire with my rebellion. Okay. His eyes there shine with childlike mischief. That's... That's not childlike mischief. J just saying. That, that's something you should go to the hospital for. She says you have no chance if you keep playing this. No, you won't. Well, I've done both options, so... That's time I did the defense, so let's go offense. She is re either really mocking me or trying to trick me. I have nothing else to lose, though, so I might as well try something different. Maybe if I spread out my force and try to control more territories, I can regroup, recoup the advantage. Shizune seems to focus on conquering whole nations, so maybe I can sacrifice my hold on continents to gain more small countries. It's worth a shot. A few turns later, I end up losing the game anyway. Well, it's because she cheated. Somehow. Yeah. Just trying to make you feel better, though. Shizune adjusts her glasses victoriously and allows herself attentively pump a fist in the air in celebration. Who just said fist pump? I win, I win, yay! There's no need to trounce like that, it's pretty clear. Wahaha, <laughs> don't look so sad, Shan. You were just really giving it your best. That's why I thought. Sometimes your best isn't good enough. So if you wanted, if anyone knows that, it's me. You did very well for someone who just learned how to play. Ishan, you attacked Iceland and North America at the same time. That's a very d daring move, Ishan. I'm impressed. Yeah. Very sure of a text event. Base game. Then again, I have two more planned for today. The mark of great people is that they're daring, and they can follow through. You're already halfway there, isn't that great, Ishan? That isn't enough, though. Just potential isn't enough. There's no point to potential if you don't take the first step. There's no point in that if you don't keep going. I want to see more. You're right, Shishan, but that's so demanding. Shizune leans forward and suddenly looking a lot less playful and a more like the serious person I expected her be from the start. Shishan, would you like to join the student council? She really doesn't want, doesn't waste any time, does she? But it's only my second day of school, so I'm hesitant about committing to science so early. I haven't even taken a look at the other clubs yet. But spending time with Shizuna and Misha doesn't seem like something I would hate. I still need more time to think about it before I decide for sure. Maybe. I'll get back to you if you want it. Okay, Shan. But I hope you're not saying that so we don't feel bad. No, really. <laughs> really? Shan, if you're going to say that, you're saying that is definitely the truth and there can't be any mistaking it. I know, I know. I guess I shouldn't have... I should have my revenge for losing at the very least. Do you think smiles in that... Okay, words with the face. Maybe our people think it's cute. I think it's more like cat face than them. I'm okay with cats. Just more dog person. She smiles in that way of mischief in the mischievous mischievous way that feels like twisting the knife in the wound of my loss. I take a glance at the clock in the wall and realise I spent far longer playing this than I expected. Sorry, I think I have to go. I wanted to go to the library. It's not closed yet, is it? Suzune scratches her head and gestures at Misha. How hard can it be determining whether the library's open? There's a clock right there on the wall. I don't see it, but good for you, Miss Anne. It should be, unless the librarian is absent. I think you're right, Mr. Shan. We think the library is open. It's on the second floor, can't miss it. Do you want us to show where it is? No thanks, it's okay. See you tomorrow. Bye bye. See where I think I've been recording for a good amount of time now. And with that pause, tell you the truth, I have no clue if it's still recording. So hope it is. But if we I guess that'll be enough for one part now, so hopefully see you guys for another one. Bye.